there are many ancient places upon our planet, which we are yet to cover upon our channel. Many intriguing, unexplainable, and thus controversial ancient ruins that, although more than likely discovered and noted by an academic at some point within modern history, has since been banished to selective ignorance deliberately overlooked. This often in favor of retaining one's funding within a certain field of study. Ancient quarries is an area of study that is indeed filled with these ancient anomalies. Seemingly machined stones litter many of the more intriguing locations, one of them undoubtedly Aswan Quarry, not only containing an unfinished obelisk of gigantic proportions, but also seemingly later additions carved as if left by a later advanced civilization. Additionally, the more prehistoric quarries that can be found dotting America's Great Lakes, notably Superior, copper mines and quarries fly in the face of currently attested chronology regarding ancient man. We presume that the most compelling of these sites had indeed since their initial modern rediscovery been widely studied by alternative researchers. However, Cava de Cusa seems to have been largely overlooked, regardless of its astonishing ancient relics, which can be found at the site. Located three kilometers south of Campobella di Massara, in the province of Trapani, Italy, the entire quarry, and indeed the length of the ruin, is an astonishing 1.8 kilometers long, located upon a natural ridge spanning from east to west. According to academia, this site was quarried from the beginning of the first half of the 6th century BC. This, regardless of the clearly shifted, mysteriously abandoned, gigantic, unexplainable megaliths which still litter the site. We feel, with such unexplainably large stones seemingly left in situ at the site, like many other unexplained sites that can be found on Earth, were built by an advanced ancient civilization capable of building with such enormous stones. The quarry was abandoned in 409 BC, when it was captured by the Carthaginians. Regardless of academia's limited opinions regarding the quarry, we feel the most interesting and possibly most controversial anomalies to unravel are the abandoned cuts still at the site. Just what were these ancient people making? Why did they abandon these curious megaliths where they lay today? How were they able to shift such enormous stones? We feel there is strong evidence to suggest that Cava de Cusa was an ancient quarry, once used and mysteriously abandoned by a lost civilization once capable of shifting unimaginably enormous stones, and as such, is highly compelling. Peru undoubtedly has one of the most compelling collection of ancient ruins that can be found anywhere on Earth. A vast collection of astonishingly well-preserved, incredibly ingenious, complex-designed ancient settlements, infrastructure, irrigation, agricultural designs, with countless others, often incorporated or accomplished through the creation of precisely executed, purpose-built structures with incredible features to accomplish built-in functions of astonishing ancient contraptions. Contraptions modern man has not only learned about through the building of these sites, but thanks to the brilliant condition of much of ancient Peru, the work of the as forementioned polygonal civilization, one of four lost civilizations which we have personally identified here on the channel in prior videos, Feats of engineering which enabled us to use identified methods and signature stonework to ultimately verify the work of separate civilizations. Which due to modern belief systems and the profit and control this provides to those who profit from said societal infrastructures is actively hidden by a mainstream academia's morally destitute funding structure. Yet, regardless, these sites eventually deciphered and understood by modern studies. Moré, for example, is an ancient ruin that displays the levels of advanced knowledge that the builders once possessed. These step-like designs are also found at Ole Te Tambo, among others, although appearing as the steps of giants, were in reality 
used to acclimatize different plant species, often types of crops, herbs, and food producers to a different altitude to where they were native, allowing this ancient civilization to take food-producing plant types high into the mountains. These extraordinary ancient builds, studied by countless talented individuals for many years, have now been decoded and understood in depth, in particular the infrastructure and the fact that it is unquestionably far too advanced to be publicly claimed as the work of the Incans. Thus, this has culminated in the academic world being forced to not only admit this, but do so in such a way that anyone who continues to press the issue soon realizes it is not only a confession in regards to their awareness of past, now lost, once highly advanced ancient civilizations, but is a broad categorization of said ruins as pre-Incan. And just like the incredible network of water channels previously covered, which connect many ancient settlements which allowed water to be pumped from places of abundance to places of drought, providing precious water supplies to countless ancient sites. The Yachttails are yet another collection of incredible ancient structures which you are unlikely to hear about in mainstream historical studies. Yachttails came in many shapes and sizes. These incredible builds were once enormous freezers, not only used to create ice in cooler climates, but to store it during the hotter times of the year. These miraculous inventions, from spiral designs, wind tower designs, and ingenious vent placement designs, all assured cool air would continuously flow into vast underground portions of the structures. This either created ice or allowed ice to be stored and kept in a frozen state for an impressively long time. Refrigeration and the benefits of such were unquestionably understood by the builders of these structures. Yet modern utilization of the same methods of food storage, that being refrigeration via modern technologies, is only a very recent development, with much of the world, until the turn of the century, still salting meats. The question then is, how did this ancient civilization know about the benefits of cool storage? How did they understand how to build these structures? Where did such ideas and ultimate utilizations originate from? Was this knowledge possessed by an even older lost civilization? one in which the members responsible for the Yachttails were once members of? Yachttails, ancient refrigerators, are undoubtedly an incredible aspect of Peru's ancient relics. Relics which we find highly compelling. When people visit the southeastern Anatolian province of Mardin, this gem of lost antiquity quietly sits, often overlooked, and when one begins to investigate said site, they are often left with more questions than answers. For why does such an astonishing ruin go largely unnoticed? Why is it not more largely discussed within archaeological circles? Could it be due to the fact, as one with any level of knowledge regarding lost civilizations and the proof therein latches eyes upon the site, they instantly recognize its characteristics synonymous with these studies? matching other, yet rather interestingly, accidentally revealed ruins from around the world. The style of, and the decision to bore the dwellings from solid stone, reminiscent of many unexplained ruins, such as the underground city of Derinkuyu, a particularly interesting site when indeed discovered entirely by accident, one which to this day remains heavily debated, and to some, highly controversial. This site, known as Dara, is exhibiting geological processes which are now, unfortunately, beginning to erode it back into the landscape. The construction technique, however, still testament to its original builder's abilities and indeed its possible age. Yet this does not answer the question as to why this ruin goes largely untalked of, largely unstudied and overlooked. For parallel to the erosion argument exhibiting its true age, it can also be used as an advocate for its official dating within the Byzantine era. The lack of surviving ruins will often be used as a way to dismiss such claims of antiquity due to a lack of evidence. Thus, we wanted to dig a little deeper to see if, via visual evidence, we could confirm that there is indeed reason to suspect 
that the site could possibly generate controversy for those who originally dated the site. This to confirm our initial suspicions. Still, surviving tool marks present upon the stones match that of other controversially dated sites. How can a ruin apparently dating from the Bronze Age exhibit such long cut marks or finishes across the stone? Like that of the ancient pyramids, how could copper tools have accomplished such feats within Dara, Giza, and the other sites around the world? It is a question which we find highly compelling.